All right. Um, we are obviously starting motion and rates. And we're starting with 9A, which is average velocity and speed. So let's read through the bunch of theory in here that we need to understand. So if we have motion in one direction, is this first part. The position of a particle moving in a straight line measures its location from a fixed point of reference, and our reference point is usually the origin. The position can be specified at any time by a single number, which we are calling x. This is called the displacement. The whole motion can be described by giving x as a function of time. Negative values of time are generally excluded because we can't have negative time. Now, displacement measures the distance of a particle from the origin. It's kind of what we already said in the last part. To the right-hand side of the origin, it will be positive. And to the left-hand side, it will be negative. Okay, you can have negative displacement because displacement has a direction, not just a measurement. Okay, those of you that do physics will understand that, that displacement is different from a distance. We'll talk about that more when we get to the distance one down below. When the particles at the origin, its displacement is zero. That means that x is equal to zero. All right, velocity is the measure of how the displacement changes over time. If that's how it changes over time, we can find it by putting the change in displacement over time. It's kind of like the speed equals distance over time thing that you did in like year eight, nine, in there. But if it's velocity, it's going to be the displacement over time. Note, on a displacement versus time graph, the average velocity between two points in time will be equal to the gradient of the chord joining these two points. Gradient, that's very important because that's going to tie in to things like derivatives as we come up to them. Because our derivative is our gradient, right? But that's coming up later. Velocity can be positive or negative according to which direction. So again, both displacement and velocity are directional. So from the origin, going to the right is positive, going to the left is negative for both of them. Um, when an object is not moving, this is often a key thing that we use. If it is not moving, we say that it is at rest, which means that the velocity is equal to zero. Okay, how is that different from our distance and our speed, which is terminology that we're probably more familiar with? The distance travel takes into account Sorry, the distance travelled takes into account any journey and return. Distance travelled can never be negative. Okay, so a very simple example of that is if this is my starting point, I could go from and do all sorts of things, but if I come back to the exact same starting point, my displacement is zero, but my distance is not. The distance is however far I did with my little weave, I did actually travel something, okay? So you need to know whether, how far you've gone that little bit of a trip. So speed is also the same thing. Um, the average speed is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time, but again, it's not a directional thing. Speed and distance are not directional. So you, you will use a distance, not a displacement, to work out a speed. Speed can be neg neg never negative because it's not directional. And here is your speed equals distance over time that you're familiar with from many years ago. All right, so what are we going to do with all that information? Here we go. Example number one. Consider a ball that is hit vertically upwards from ground level. Where it is in motion, it can be described using the formula x equals 4t bracket 10 take away t where t is in seconds and x is in meters. Find the height of the ball after two seconds. Okay, so remember x is representing the displacement, t is representing time. So if I want the, the height, which is the displacement in this case, after two seconds, I just have to sub that into my equation. So I'm gonna say when t equals two, my x will be equal to, 4 times 2 bracket 10 take away 2, which equals 64 meters. Okay, it is a positive number, so it's going to mean it's 
above, so it's going up. Part B, at what other time is the ball at this same height above the ground? That same height being the 64 meters. What I want to do is I want to put in that x is equal to 64 into this original equation back here and solve it to see if there's any other values that could come out for t. All right, so 64 equals 4t. Oh, I'll do it again. Um, what was the rest of it? 10. Got to keep looking back because I can't see on the top of my page anymore. 10 take away t. How am I going to solve that equation? First step. It is a quadratic, but what am I going to have to do to it first? Expand it and get everything on one side. So 64 equals 40t minus 4t squared. All right, let's move everything to the left. 4t squared, take away 40t, plus 64 equals zero. What else can I do before I try to solve it? Divide out of four. Because it's equal to zero, just divide it away. So that will be t squared minus 10t plus 16 equals zero. Okay, that's now a non-monic, sorry, which is much easier to factorize. So what things times to give 16 add to give a negative 10? Yes. So t negative 8, t minus 2 equals 0. And then using null factor, we get t equals 8 or t equals 2. Now the t equals 2 we already knew. That was from part A. But we found the extra one when t equals 8 or maybe I should say over here, when time equals eight seconds, because I should try to include units for these questions, um, would be the other time that it would be 64 metres above the ground. Part C, draw a sketch of the path of the ball over time. Okay, so because it is um, a sketch of over time, my horizontal axis is going to be the t, the time axis. That's my independent variable, okay? Um, my graph, I know I've got things happening up to eight seconds. It's gonna to have to go a bit further than that. Um, I actually need to go to 10 and I'll show you why. Oh, now I really messed it up. Let's start that bit again. Okay, so this is the T axis, and that means that the vertical axis is going to be X. And remember that X is representing the height. Okay, so if you need a little reminder, you could write that this is, and it's not, that is representing the height of the um, ball that's been thrown. Okay, so what I want to do is I've got two points already that are when, when the height of the ball is 64. So that was at time equals two, I'm gonna put 64 here. At time equals two, and at time equals eight, it is also at 64. Now there's possibly other strategies that I could have used, but because I have those two points, actually, I probably should ask another question. What type of graph do you think this is going to be that I'm drawing? It's a parabola, because this equation for time that I had up here before, it was a parabola, so that kind of gives it away. Um, so I'm after the turning point of this parabola. Because I have these two points, it has to be right in the middle, which is where? Between 2 and 8, the average is 5. Good. So let's sub in. <laughs> so over here on the side, I'm subbing in the T5 
into my original equation, which gives me 100 metres. So at time equals 5, my maximum height is at 100, which is up here. Okay, where is my ball going to hit the t-axis? When at time equals zero, how far is the ball off the ground? Zero, because it should be starting at ground level when we throw it. And there's another way to get that. Come back to the original equation. Null factor from here. What makes this equation zero? Either 4t equals zero, and if t equals zero, or the other one is t equals 10. Okay, so t equals 10 is my other one. I've got all the important points. Let's join it up. Okay, there is our parabola. Part D. Find the average velocity of the ball during the first two seconds of its journey. Now, it says velocity, so just be careful with that. A velocity, an average velocity, the formula that we went through before was the displacement over time. Okay, so have a look at my diagram here. In, can we stop the chatter please? I keep stopping because I'm waiting for you to finish and be ready. But you need to be listening, not chatting the whole way through this. Chat later, not now. In the first two seconds, that means zero, one, two. How far is my displacement? 64. I've travelled 64 metres. And the time that that took was two, and I probably should include my units. The 64 was in metres, and the two was in seconds. So that when I divide them, 64 divided by two, I get 32 metres per second is the average velocity. Obviously, it's not a constant, it's changing but that's the average over those two seconds. Yes, David? Uh, up. Because it's a positive number, it means up. When it, when, if you calculate a negative, it means it's coming back down. Sorry? Um, yeah, if you want to, you can definitely write it out in words. Um, I'll mark you down if you didn't. I would mark you down if it was negative and you didn't include it because I'd ask for a because I'd ask for a um, displace a velocity. So if it was negative, it needed to stay a negative. But because that is positive, I'm happy for you to write it out and explain more if you want to. But I think that answer would be fine. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Part E: Find the average velocity of the ball during the sixth second of its journey. Now, there is a one second time frame that we're looking at. Let's have a look at our graph here. From zero to one is the first second of travel, from zero to one. So if I want the sixth second, where am I looking between? The five and the six, correct. So this is first second, two, three, four, five, six second is between the five and the six. So you can see that it is coming back down by then. So five, that's its highest point, and it is coming back down, so we should get a negative this time. But what we're going to do to calculate it is I need to find the two displacement measurements at those points. So when T I'm going to call it T1. The first time is at five seconds. And I'm going to call the second time six seconds. All right? I want to know what is my displacement when T is equal to five. So we put that into our formula. We already know it, actually. It's 100. We've already worked that one out before. But we haven't worked out the six. So my displacement when time equals six 
is going to be 4 times 6 bracket 10 minus 6. That's subbing into the original formula for x. Okay, that is 96, and these are all in meters. Okay, so remember that a velocity or an average velocity is the displacement over time. If I have it as written as two points, though, it is the gradient, it is the slope. I could write the formula a little bit differently using my, well, pretty much the two-point formula for a gradient. So average velocity, I'm going to do, we would normally do the y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. That's our gradient for two points. But my, my y's are actually my x values this time. So it's x2 take x1 over t2 take t1. It's the change in the height over the change in the horizontal one, which is time this time. Okay, you don't have to, that's not a formula you have to memorize, but as long as you know that that displacement is the change in height over the change in time. Okay, so x2 was 96 minus x1, which is 100. My second time was 6, take away my first time, which was 5. So it is important that you get those numbers around the right way, otherwise that negative sign is not going to come out. But when we do 96 minus 100, we get a negative 4 over 1, because 6 minus 5 is 1, and this would be meters per second. So you can see that negative, it's a, because it is coming back down, is why that negative sign is in there. Uh, I think we finished that one, F. Find the average velocity and the average speed, so we've got two things to find here, of the ball during the seventh second. Okay, now instead of doing those in a, such a long way, I'm going to look at the different t values and the different x values that I need. I'm going to make a table this time so it's a little bit less space to work it all out. This is in the seventh second, so what time values am I looking at? Six and seven, correct. Sub each of those into our x equation to find out what x is at those points. We already know six though, don't we? We've done that one already, that was in the last question. It is 96, so sub the seven in and you get 84. Okay, so that table might be a little bit easier to use. So let's do the average velocity first because we did that in the last question. So average velocity is going to be equal to that same idea of subtracting the x's over subtracting the time. So subtracting the x's would be 84 minus 96 over 7 minus 6. So it's that one minus that one over that one minus that one. Okay. No, 84 minus 96 is a negative 12 over 1, so meters per second. It's getting faster as it goes down. Um, all right, but we're not finished this time. We want to find the average speed. Speed is what is the total distance that it traveled, but no direction. So I would just say that it traveled 12 it was, yeah, it was negative 12 when I did it as a displacement, but it's just a positive 12 over the same one second. So it's just a positive 12 meters per second. You take the direction out of it. Okay, you don't have to calculate it again. Take the direction out of it. Part G, find the average velocity and the average speed of the ball during the last eight seconds. Okay, just gonna go back to my diagram for a second. The last eight seconds, it finishes here at 10, which means I have to start here at two. So the biggest problem we have is that it's going up for part of it and down for another part. That's gonna make things different between a velocity and a speed here, okay? So the points that I'm interested in is two, so that's where we're starting from. Five is important, because that's where it turns around, and 10, because that's where it ends. All right, so I'm going to make a new little table with time, whoops, that should be time, and the 
displacement. So we're looking at 2, 5 and 10. We already know the displacements of those points. It's 64, 100 and 0. Okay, so if I want to find the average velocity, velocity doesn't care about the fact that you've gone up further and come back down. All it cares about is where you started and where you finished. So we just use, we started here, finished here. So we're just going to do that minus that over that minus that. So it's 0 minus 64 over 10 take away 2, which is negative 8 metres per second. But let's work out the average speed because this is different. When it's a speed, I want the total distance that I travelled from 2 to 10 seconds. So I started at 64 metres above the ground. I went up to 100. How far have I travelled? Oh, How far did I travel? 36. I travelled 36 to get up to the top, and then we have to do 100 all the way back down. So it's a, I'll add them together. 36 going up, 100 going down. No direction, because this is not a displacement. This is just total distance that I've gone. And that would be divided by the 8 seconds that we were looking at. So that is equal to 17 metres per, sec per second. Okay, so this is, this is a little bit wordy, these questions. You do have to be very careful that you're not confusing velocity, speed, and distances and displacements. Okay, but that's the end of five, uh, 9A. Let's.